Okay, so it's seen a really cool video here by Elgo Vibes. This is a channel I've just come across. I can neither recommend nor not recommend the channel. But what I can tell you is from this video I've just watched already, I really had liked what I'd seen. And what I want to do is take this strategy here in this video, and I'm going to backtest a similar strategy, my take on a strategy, which is similar to this. And just to see what that comes out like, and to sort of show you here, you know, what are the pitfalls? what are some of the strengths, et cetera, out of doing a strategy like this. Um, but one of the things I just want to say right out the gate is I really liked how this person had shown, you know, the code, the way that this is structured and the way that this works with these NumPy arrays, et cetera, is very similar to how we built the back end of Crypto Wizards, right, for the no code. So this is um, this was really cool to see. So from a coding perspective, it was good to see. It was good to see how, you know, these trades were actually analyzed uh, here in Python, etc. Um, and also just the way the gentleman speaks. So I'll let you have a listen. Video description, explaining it and implementing it in Python. If those two conditions are fulfilled, we are placing a 3% by limit order. So just very clear, very pleasant to listen to, etc. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to keep the screen open here and I'm going to follow this very loosely. And I say very loosely because I'm just going to do this um, quick and dirty and, you know, in line with getting a video cut without it taking too long. Um, but I'm going to go and do that now. So we're going to look for either the Russell 1000 or Russell 2000. I'll pick whatever comes up there. So uh, here I'm just going to go to Data Builder and grab, um, you know, Russell. So let me just see here. So that's an index, actually. So let me put in RU for Russell. So I've got a number of options here. Actually, I can do the Russell... Uh, 1000 total return, I can do the Russell 2, th I'll actually take the Russell 2000, because I'm just more familiar with that. And here I'm going to take maximum, so 20 years of data. And I'm going to take daily data and just go and grab that um, quickly. So I'm just going to call that Russell. And I'm going to go and run that, uh, pull that data. So we've got the data now. And let's pop over there to data engineer and have a look here. So here's our data, open, high, low, close, adjust to close volume. Uh, VWAP and all that jazz. So the first thing I want to do, and you can see here it starts in 2001 and it goes up until the 21st, um, which is essentially, what is that? That's Monday. Is that right? Yesterday? Monday? Must be Monday. So, so we've got all that data. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to uh, just delete some features. So I'm going to get rid of all these columns that we're not going to need. I basically just need open, high, low, close. So everything else can essentially go. And if I go back and look at the strategy, so basically the stock needs to be in an upward trend. So it's what I'll say is it's open price or low price or whatever, whatever you want to pick, uh, close price needs to be above the 200 day moving average, right? So it's got to be in an upward trend. The next thing is um, it needs to close two and a half standard deviations below the 20 day Bollinger Band. So what I'm going to do is take the lower band of the Bollinger Band. I'm show you how to add that in now. I'm going to take that. And if the close price is below that, that's going to add into my go long condition. And then the entry is essentially, you know, uh, buy limit order below the previous day's closing price. So if the closing price is below the previous day closing price, there's basically three different types of conditions here that have to happen in order for me to consider the trade. And then exit is going to be the two day RSI crosses above 50 or after 10 trading days. Uh, I often like strategies that have a time period to close that trade. I don't know why I just do. So I really like that as a suggestion there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and add in some indicators. So the first thing is to go to TA to add in indicators. So we'll take Bollinger Bands, um, standard deviation of two to three. I'll take two because I've not got 2.5 here. And it's a 20 moving average. So here I've got 20 day Bollinger Band. So we'll use the window of 20 and I'll add that in um, over here. So this is going to go and add the Bollinger Bands to the data. I'll show you that in a second. I can remove that now. It's already in the data. And the other thing I need is RSI. Um, so I need RSI as well. And it's a two day moving average. So I'm literally going to take that two day RSI, um, which is very narrow, right? That's a very narrow, that's very sharp stochastic action going on there. Um, I'm going to add that in. By the way, I have no idea whether these are good ideas or bad ideas. This is just me loosely following the guidance. So that's added on as well. 
And finally, the moving average. Um, so if I don't change these, it won't add these other ones. And I'm going to add in the 200 day moving average because we're going to need that as well, right? So let's add in that 200 day moving average and bada bing, bada boom, that should be in. All right, cool. Now let's go over here to view the table. So here you can see I've got my um, higher band. This is the standard deviations above. I've got my lower band, the standard deviations below. Here's the close price. So you can see that the 1925 represents the two standard deviations below that which is what I believe Bollinger Band is doing, etc. Um, if I scroll to the right, there's some other Bollinger Band items here, but there's also the 200 day moving average and also the RSI uh, number here as well. Now you'll notice there's a lot of blanks and this is because of the 20 day moving average. The table is showing the top five and bottom five rows of data. If I downloaded this, you would see the full set, uh, which I can do by just downloading that data set down there. But what I'm going to do here is go to transform features and drop any blanks. So this drop in a, I'm just going to remove all of those blanks at the start of the data set. And so that's going to clean that nicely for me. Uh, when I go back here to view the table, you'll see that we've lost a few days um, at the start of the data set. We're now starting from the 3rd of October, 2002, but that's fine. That's because of the 200 day moving average, et cetera, now kicking in, right? We've got plenty of data here is what I'm saying. Cool. So that's our data taken care of. Now what I want to do is go and back test this, right? So I'm going to go and select in Backtrader uh, the Russell CSV. So I'm here down at this tool here now. And what I'm interested in is, you know, are these conditions here? So the stock needs to be above the 200 day moving average. So I'm comparing a price versus a moving average. So that's a general comparison. I'm not saying the price has to be a specific value. If I was, I would use that. So I'm just going to say, I'll just take the close price for now. This is just a quick video. So we'll take close price is above the, the moving average 200. And that's, you know, on the same day of comparison. If I wanted to compare it to X amount of days back, I would change the look back over there, right? So I'll just add that in. And here you can see it's added it, right? So go long if the close is greater than the moving average 200, right? The adjust one means don't multiply that by 97% of that value or anything like that. That's all that does so we can ignore it. Now let's take a look here. So the next thing is the stock closes two and a half standard deviations below the 20 day Bollinger Band. All right, so that's interesting. So what I'm gonna do here is say the stock needs to also then close below the lower band of our Bollinger Band um, data that we pulled. And that was the 20, the one with the 20 day moving average. Um, so that's a condition as well. And I'm going to add that in. So now we've got two conditions. And the way the tool works here is all conditions I add have to be true in order for a trade to get placed, right? So we're just going to keep stacking, stacking conditions uh, into place here. The entry is to uh, place a buy limit order below the previous day's close price. Right. So if I look at the previous day's close price, then what I want to say is the close price also needs to be below the close price minus one day. Right. So this is the look back now I'm going to use, which is minus one day. And I could say, you know, um, similar to, you know, um, the, the video as well. I could say, let's you know, make it even below like X percent of that price. So I could say, you know, take 0.98 percent of that prior day and it needs to be below that 98% of that price, or, you know, another 2% lower, I'm just going to leave that uh, for now as it is, or as one or as zero, or whatever, add that in here. So you can see here now we've got that the close price needs to be below the close of the prior day. Now that takes care of, I believe, our uh, criteria for going long. So if all three of those trigger, we're in, right, we're in for a trade. How do we get out? Okay, so the two day RSI needs to be above 50. What does 50 mean? Well, that's the value of RSI. So that's how I read it. Anyway, it's got to be above that 50 mark. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, we've got all these long positions, let's close our long. So we're going to select close long over here. If the RSI is above 50. Now, actually, we can't compare it to something here, we need an, a specific value. So here's where we go to the value condition, right? So if the RSI is above 50. Um, by the way, there was some uh, kind of bugs here in the way some of this was presenting. Um, 
and also an undefined error that came up. So I've done some bug fixes too as part of doing uh, an exercise very close to this earlier. So just in case you'd seen that before, hopefully you won't see that again. So what I'm going to do here is add that in. So now we have the conditions for closing along. So all three of these conditions have to happen for going long. And we've only got one condition for closing along. But when I look at this here, it says, look, the two day RSI needs to cross about 50 or after 10 trading days. And so we can actually do that. We can go down here and we can say close after 10 days or 11 days if I wanted to follow that, I think, to the book maybe. Um, but the minute I've set that, it says 10 trading days have passed. Right, then it's going to also close there. So it'll close based on one of those two conditions um, over here. So very straightforward. Um, let's go up. The price that I'm going to base um, placing the positions at uh, could be considered the open. I could take the open price, um, uh, but this is already making use of the open price. I've already got that selected as yes and to lag periods. So these two in combination, just do what we've spoken about before, right? Just avoid look ahead bias. Um, I won't add commissions in for now because I usually do that once a strategy seems profitable. So we'll do that after. But let's add this up here and just call this, you know, Russell uh, BT for backtest and hit run and just wait for that to go through. So actually it, it was really bloody quick um, and it's creating the reporting for us now. Okay, well, actually, um, in terms of win rate, the win rate looks really good. Actually, it's 70% win rate. Um, the ROI from the strategy is 30% but the benchmark is 5.8. So I'll go more into this in a moment. Uh, so that's quite interesting as well. Uh, we'll go into more of the details of the trades. But first of all, the win rate, that's very promising. So if you're an options trader, if win rate to you in terms of directionality is important, um, this has got a 70% win rate, which I think is fantastic. But let's, let's download the PDF report and actually go and take a look here and see how this is looking. So if we open that, um, here we go. So here's the metrics. The annual return is about 10%. Um, from a buy and hold perspective, this, this returned 2% per year. Uh, the cumulative return was huge. Obviously, if you've owned the, if you just bought and hold the Russell for 20 years, you've obviously going to have made a lot of money, uh, whether it's, this was 35%, right? So it doesn't beat the market. And by the way, if, it's very difficult to find a strategy like this using TA, using, you know, Bollinger Bands. Well, Bollinger Bands, <laughs> interesting. Uh, they're actually my favorite because they work based on standard deviation. But, you know, like RSI or MACD or, you know, like it's very hard to beat the market. Typically, I find um, in terms of returns for buy and hold over the long term. And there's so many reports out there that kind of talk about that. Now, what's interesting about this strategy is for every dollar in volatility, you're not getting that much dollar in reward based on my version, by the way. So this is not to detract at all from this video. I definitely recommend like go and watch other videos, right? This is just Sean's take on it. So again, this channel, I really like the way um, this fellow spoke, etc. But I, I do want to just give you, you know, what is my what is my view on this? in terms of would I go and put money in the strategy? Actually, I would consider it from a win rate perspective and options trading. What I also liked about the strategy is the maximum drawdown is actually, well, it's, it was 19%, um, but but it's not, it's really not that bad. Like it's really not that bad compared to other strategies that I've seen as well. So that's one thing I would say there. Um, the buy and hold, you can see the drawdowns are obviously much greater. So this blue line here is the buy and hold. The pink line is the st strategy, right? Uh, and if we just look down here as well, the the sharp ratio seems to fluctuate a lot. So uh, looking at a rolling sharp ratio basis. So again, take the sharp ratio with a grain of salt. This is over a very, very long time frame. So I guess what is the takeaway so far? The takeaway so far is you know, look at how many sort of uh, re uh, returns we've got here. So this is like this. You can also look at it like the frequency of trading. So if I scroll up, actually, here's how many trades and when those trades got placed. What I like about this is 
because it favors you know going long when the price is above the 200 day moving average you you can see that long positions are really placed here that there weren't many positions placed when the market was going down and so that that seems quite smart that seems quite awesome to me and when i look at the returns here you know these are um the returns based on your actual account what trades got closed and therefore what did your account returns look like right so this um this looks pretty good but i mean honestly you would have gone through what is that that's probably about uh, what is that 10 probably about eight years making about 10 percent over eight years then losing it all and then making you know head of gains when the market went up so a strategy like this is only going to be useful in an upward trending market from what i can tell now let's go and do something interesting um, let's go and add in some commissions so i'm going to go and add in 0 0.001 and some slippage assumptions as well with no rebate so let's just put in some basically let's put in some cost assumptions of some kind and see, you know, how does that impact um, our our returns? How does that actually look? So the win rate, of course, is the same. Uh, let's download the PDF here. So that's reduced our profit by 30%, actually adding in costs. So here you can argue there's a lot of trades, there's costs involved with those trades. Is it worth doing? My answer is if you're an options trader and you're looking for uh, high win rate strategies during an upward trending market, i.e. the price is above the 200 day moving average. This is probably a good strategy to look into, although it does prove that it's also very highly volatile. Regardless, there's a good win rate on the strategy. And that's why I think this is something worth considering. Um, my view on the strategy is a lot more in terms of the results coming out here is a lot more pessimistic than what you're seeing, you know, in this video and probably the, the other videos around this type of strategy. Maybe, you know, the crypto wizards algorithm is just too conservative. Um, I don't know. But, you know, it's not obviously my video is not as exciting as some of these other ones. But I did think it would be, you know, beneficial and useful for you to see how I go about testing a strategy like this. So just again, thanks to Elgo Vibes. Thanks for taking the time to do this video. Until the next time, Wizard, take care. Talk soon.